boys and ghouls. Welcome to episode 59 of Dads from the Crypt, the Tales from the Crypt podcast. My name is Jason. Tonight, I'm joined by Mondo. Hi, Jason. Hi, Mondo. And uh, Jody's out sick tonight, but we're joined by our good friend, Danica. Welcome to the pod. Hi, thanks for having me again. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. I'm starting to remember you back. were on uh, on the Dead Man's Chest. And yeah, what was the uh, the first one you were on? Easel Killia. So Easel Killia, we're, right. We're I've, hitting, done, uh, I've done most of Larry Wilson's episodes. Oh, yeah. Nice. I actually, I was That's on Instagram today and someone ah. just posted that they were doing an interview with him. And I've been trying to get a hold of him since Easel Killia. So I messaged them to try to hook me up. So we'll see if we can get a hold of him. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, no, he's on a lot of episodes, so uh, that'd be really cool. Um, is there anything you're working on you want to share or talk about? Right now, not really. I'm just working on a follow up to my comic. So mm-hmm. nice, cool. All right, well, let's hop into it. So tonight we're talking about food for thought. This episode came out on October 6, nineteen ninety three. Since Jody's not here, I get the uh, the honor. The privilege to do the plot synopsis. Hold on, are you just going to read one you found on the internet, or do you type up to your own the, notes? Yeah, <laughs> okay. No, I ain't got time for that. I mean, that's your half-ass, and it was fine. That's fine. As Ron Swans would say, "Don't half-ass two things; whole-ass one thing." Okay. Um, all right. So we open up with the classic look of the crypt keeper dressed up as the old school dentist with um, kind of that metal headband with the little circular thing. I don't know what the hell that thing does. It's to reflect. Um, it's to reflect light. To reflect light. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know he's pulling out the teeth of somebody. It, lo- it looks like Al, but um, I'm not sure. I messaged him to see. Um, but there's he's got a person you know tied up in his chair, and um, you know he's giving out uh, dental advice as you know one does when you're a corpse. <laughs> um, well, he, he says, "Don't let your teeth look like mine." And I was like, "Oh yeah, man, he does have some." Some messed up teeth. Yeah, he's got a little dose of frightous oxide for you. Um, anyway, so we hop into the episode. This is another one of the in the series of carnival themed uh, episodes. Um, so we got the carnival sitting, which is always a good time for crypt. Um, so at the carnival, Zambini is our main character, played by Ernie Hudson, is cooking a meal for him and his wife, Connie. I didn't realize that was his wife. Oh, maybe I missed that um no they, they they definitely brought it up because i think um later on when you get to it when he accuses the mm, okay. strong man of, of cheating you're cheating with my wife or something like that okay i thought they were just cohabitating okay so he's trying to he's a mind reader he's trying to read her thoughts and she complains that she's tired i guess it's something he can't just do on his own he needs her to be part of the conduit to do it um Anyway, she complains that she's tired and asks if it isn't enough for him that she can read his. So I guess it's good. Yeah, so it goes two ways. She can read his thoughts. He can read hers. But I guess supposedly he's the stronger of the two. At least that's what is presented. Actually, um, the, main, the main issue is he can't read hers. And that's a yes. source of conflict between them. Okay. Yeah. He exactly. desperately yeah. wants to be able to read her mind. And so he but says, he, I want to... I want to taste your thoughts. Right. Yeah. He's a, she's a morsel to him, which right. you know, we can dive into. Um, but I guess, but she has some, but she has psychic abilities as well. So she's like able to block him out to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, yeah, he's referring to her as foo, which is just all kinds of gross. And he's got, he's got like full on like face makeup. I don't think we ever seen without makeup in this episode. Uh, uh, they, um, they make reference to, um, the jokes, uh, kind of joke, mm-hmm. saying that the uh, the makeup hides his gin blossoms, which is um, when you get flushed from drinking too much alcohol. So they kind oh. of uh, allude, uh, allude to him being a alcoholic, right? Okay. And Connie also says that it's possible that he wears the makeup to hide from the police because oh, yeah. he says that he beat up his last assistant, or rather, she says um, he told her that. Okay, and now I know where the name of the uh, '90s all group came from. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so basically, uh, where were we? He makes guesses to what she's thinking and is denied. He tells her that he need, she needs to teach him how to read her mind um, like she does to his. She storms away only for him to finally get into her head. And he's like really creepily licking his dinner plate. 
and just saying he wants his desserts and makes her come over and it just it gets weird he says he wants his favorite treats to which she succumbs and he tells her not to stop this time while she is kissing him he reaches for a box of chocolates it's it's real it's real uncomfortable <laughs> yeah very much very uncomfortable yeah um so the next day or so at a uh, carnival attraction uh, Zambini introduces Connie to the crowd, blindfolding her, and says that she'll be able to uh, be his radio, to which a heckler says that he wants to twist her dials. Zambini asks Connie uh, what the heckler is wearing, since she can't see him, and she says dirty underwear, which is a pretty good comeback. Um, heckler is embarrassed. Zambini grabs something from the man's pocket and asks her what it is, and she says it's a Bible. The heckler picks a passage as Zambini asks Connie what it is, and she correctly uh, reads it, which, you know, gets the crowd uh, into it. Um, and this reminds me a lot of that movie, uh, Nightmare Alley, which is, I think is very Tulsa the esque uh, There's a scene very much like that, which is actually really cool. Still, still, still need to watch it. Yeah, you should really should. Yeah, it's been on my list for forever. Okay, so afterwards, they're outside, I guess, in the backstage area. There's um, a little person who's a part of the act, um, and he's harassing a ape named, I'm not gonna say this right, Nambuga, Nabunga, uh, throwing food at her. And then the flame eater Johnny intervenes, telling him to leave her alone. Um, and then the flame eater, I guess, is the nice guy, uh, consoles the ape. Um, at the same time, Connie and the Johnny the flame eater uh, locks eyes. And Zabini comes out of his tent, tells Connie to go with her, saying that she wants to stay. He tells her again she needs to leave with him. Johnny intervenes and says uh, to let Connie stay if she wants to. They get a little, um, a little bravado uh, action there. Um, she ultimately leaves with Zambini. But later in the trailer, Zambini passes out with a plate of food on his lap because he's always eating. Uh, Connie leaves to go, take, to go meet up with Johnny. Um... Do, 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 do. Sorry, I lost my place. Um, okay, so uh, J- J- Jody know, will is, hopefully be back in a couple weeks. I know, Jody, Jody, we need you. Anyway, so they, they flirt for a little bit. They talk about leaving, uh, running off together to St. Louis, where his cousin can get them jobs. And uh, she said, he says he wants her to come with him. Uh, Johnny says he can't stand the way Zambini treats her. Uh, Connie says he should be afraid of him and she's afraid to leave him. So again, she's stuck in this toxic relationship. Uh, she thinks Zambini is wearing the makeup to hide from the authorities. Okay, we already talked about that. And he beat up his last assistant, possibly killing her. Uh, Connie and Johnny and Connie and Johnny uh, make out in the carnival tent. Zambini wakes up from his sleep and notices she's gone and tries to summon her. Connie hears him and runs away from Johnny. At the trailer, Zambini reads her mind, and Connie doesn't believe him. Uh, he then grabs her and drags her away. The next day, Connie has a black eye. Johnny finds out. Connie says she is leaving with Johnny, telling him she loves him, telling Zambini that she loves Johnny. Um, they kiss, and behind uh, Nambuga the ape is freaking out in his cage. Zambini is taking out his frustration in the trailer by cooking. As, my, as, a, as a healthy man does. Um, later that night, Johnny is saying his goodbye to the ape when he suddenly splashed with a bucket of kerosene. Um, and Zambini is the one doing it. And he lights a match and basically emulates him to death. Um, he then tells him that if he plays with fire, he gets burned. Uh, do, 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 do. The carnival crew makes a big ruckus, and Connie finds out what happened to Johnny. She packs her things and leaves Zambini after his final attempt, failed attempt to invade her thoughts to stop her. Zambini's alone in this trailer, drinking himself. Um, when he tries to summon Connie, telling her he forgives her for leaving him and begging her to come back, she hears a voice coming back to him, uh, saying she just can't stay, saying he she just can't stay away from him. But then we hear uh, Colin rumbling in the trailer, something big outside. And then the ape comes in and attacks Zambini with a knife. And then the voice that Zambini is hearing in his head um, says they want a taste of his mind. The ape picks up a big knife, attacks Zambini. And then afterwards, the uh, rest of the carnival finds Zambini's head in Nambuga's cage uh, with kind of his like brain exposed. And the ape is eating parts of it. 
And we cut back to the uh, Crypt Keeper um, asking us to open the wider as he um, goes in for some more dental work. And scene. All you right. See, you did a terrible marginally job. Accepted, <laughs> no, acceptable terrible. job. I, this is again, last minute, terrible. I yeah, we, we, we always say, and, uh, and we recorded actually next week's episode yesterday. And uh, just uh, again, uh, much appreciated as Jason to Jody and how good of a synopsizer he is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So, Danica, you're our guest. Uh, so, tell us, what did you think of this episode? You know, I'm the closer we got to the recording date, the more surprised I was at myself for wanting to discuss this episode because for for someone like myself who has lived through many abusive relationships, it's very triggering. It's incredibly triggering on that level. And it's also triggering in its racist imagery. Um, the, the character of the magician plays on very old uh, stereotypical racist tropes as does um, the character of Connie, Jones Chen Joan Chen's character. And so it's, it's a difficult watch for me on multiple levels. That being said, the cinematography is amazing. So it was a childhood favorite, but as an adult, I yeah. can't help but be shocked at how racist some of it is. So, was the ending cathartic at all for you? The um, mm. the abuser getting his head, you know, torn off. I actually found the ending to be incredibly fucking racist because and i talked um i talked about this episode with um like black boyfriends that i've had and they they hate it like they find it so so problematic because we we come to find that the only creature that um that the mind reader character can communicate with is the gorilla so it, mm. the the idea is that as as a creature from the jungle, the only other creature he can communicate with is not another human being, but something else like him, another beast. So again, problematic in that regard. So I thought yeah. it was it was Connie who was no. controlling. No, it was it was it was because he uh, the way the the way on um, the uh, the gorilla was talking about how much they loved. Uh, the uh, the fiery uh, Johnny. It mm -hmm. was he thought he was listening to Connie, but he was listening to the, oh, the gorilla. Yeah. That was that was kind of the twist, and that it was the gorilla professing the, professing its love for uh, Johnny. Oh, right. okay. You see, yeah, that, I guess I, I got that confused. Yeah. All right, Mondo. What did you think of this episode? Not one of my not not one of my favorites. Um, Maybe I'll wait. I mean, the, the one thing I did like about it is the cinematography in this was was really great. And I do love the backdrop of the carnival because it, it allows for so many things to like they had. Is this the one they had that weird with the weird kind of creepy little person? When he walks under the shower stall and sees little the conjoined. Funk, yeah. yeah, like it, 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 you can play with a lot of weird stuff like that when in the carnival setting. So I, so I do like that. And I do. I'm a big fan of Ernie Hudson. Mm -hmm. so I, always, I always love seeing Ernie Hudson on screen. And um, and one of the reasons, Danny, because I, lo I love when we have other people on the show is you brought up points right there. And I'm like, damn it. And I have to go back and like rethink everything, <laughs> everything I saw in this episode, uh, because you make some really, really great points on that that I didn't even, I didn't even think of. Um, so thank you for, for bringing that up. So I, I do really, really love that when we have that third point that other point of view that kind of sees from a different angle than what i can see it from um but uh but overall like uh, I, I did catch the one piece where i don't i don't like when you have i love ernie hudson I, I love just him as an actor and what he does but the one thing i did pick up was like yeah he does play the stereotypical like voodoo man almost mm -hmm. kind of playing into that stereotype that he's got to be the uh the evil character on this um after reading the comic and what you just brought up it makes me kind of dislike this episode a little bit more because the comic played around what was very, very different in, in, in how it portrayed um, all the characters and what happened to them, which we'll get to a little bit later in the comic comparison. Uh, but I'll but I'll just say that as far as a as a crypt episode goes, it at least had a little bit of um a little bit of gore for me, which I like. But uh, overall, I found this kind of a, a slow episode, and obviously now that you brought it up, with, with definitely some uh, problematic themes. I mean. Ernie Hudson's performance is so masterful in this. He's so commanding, but at the end of the day, he's still playing on 
racist tropes right. that are detrimental to the community and very specifically like Jim Crow imagery and like I don't like using the words but coon imagery like the the character design mm. the design of the makeup is oh, wow. again very reminiscent of um old racist caricatures um so well, which is really interesting because uh in the in the comic strip they doesn't do they none of that none of that's in the comic um yeah there are little bits of parts of this i like i i love yeah i'm a big fan of ernie hudson he's done so many great roles when i did when i looked at his indb we all know him from Ghostbusters one and two, but he was in Leviathan. He was in The Crow. He was in Airheads. He's so in always. The... Um, I love Airheads. Yeah, we all love Airheads. He was in Congo. He was in Oz, and he's he... also in uh, Frankie and Grace, which is a show I just kind of love. And he's but in the new. He's in the new, new um, Quantum, Quantum Leap. Leap. Quantum Leap. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but he always usually plays a really kind-hearted person. So it was at the very beginning. I was kind of like, kind of into it. He was playing this like really over the top kind of mean person, but then it just got like, oh, okay, this is this is a little too far almost. Um, like the point of like just being a little uncomfortable, kind of like um, what was it, the creature from the grave with Miguel Ferreira, um, with um, what's her name from Lois and Clark? Uh, oh, um, Terry Hatcher. Terry Hatcher, yeah, where it's just like it's almost like too real of a piece of shit, <laughs> and you're just like there's. there's yeah it, was, it just goes a little too far i mean you can never really go too far with grip at least it's like as an adult you know you're just like Oof. um but i thought connie uh john johnny john chen as connie was really good she was in the last emperor she was in a lot of episodes of twin peaks in the uh, the 90s judge dread which is you know a great oh a great silly right. action flick yeah, yeah. Um, and then Johnny is played by John Laughlin, who was an officer and a gentleman. He was a footloose, the hills have ice too, the lawnmower man, and the rock. Um, and then again, we have a uh, another great little role by Phil Fondacaro, um, who plays the little person Emmett, and he's he's always just kind of fun because you know he was in Willow and Ghoulies too and uh, Bordello Blood, and he played an Ewok. I mean, come on, you kind of have to love that guy. Yeah. Um, and this episode was directed by Rodman Flender, um, who directed Leprechaun 2, um, Idle Hands, and most recently, Eat Brains Love. And he also directed probably my favorite episode of Dawson's Creek, <laughs> The Scare, uh, which is kind of like the uh, the Scream-inspired episode. Uh, I was really into that one when that came out. This is, this, is, that's, this, is, this is all a ploy. This whole podcast, Jason, is a ploy to get us to do Dads from the Creek, isn't it? That's in the creek, yes. Well, all ties back. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, well, yeah, overall, it's a fun setting, but like, yeah, it still with some really adult themes that you know just kind of make you a little uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, there's some good gore. You know, performers are all going for it, so I can give them that. But yeah, there's just, there's a lot of lot of little things that just kind of get onto you. I think one of the most uncomfortable things is just like the control he has over her. And cause I watched that with granted, like uh, my mom doesn't get a pass cause she's an enabler, but like when my, my dad's a stepdad, stepdad's not a good person. And that's how their relationship's always been when he's always been the controlling one. And I'm like, dude, mom, you make all the money and he doesn't know how to use the internet. You can leave anytime you want to leave, but he has that power and that control over her as she refuses to leave. And you see that with a lot of abusive relationships. So that that's one of the parts that really stuck out to me and always makes me uncomfortable in these when even obviously they, they, it progressed to physical violence. They didn't show the violence, but they, they show the oh, aftermath yeah. um, but I think sometimes just that controlling factor is what gets under my skin. Yeah. Um, like, you know, we, we watch this a lot for escapism and sometimes the real world just creeps in a little too much, a little more than we like. Yeah. And, 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 and I think it's uh, too, with, with the, uh, a show like Tales from the Crypt, it, it kind of hits you off guard a little bit because, um, and, I mean, to be fair, and, you know, and in, in, in four and a half, what, four seasons and a few episodes, uh, we've seen them touch on some real you know some real real life situations a few times uh but i still think it's not the expectation of the show if that makes sense you kind of are always waiting for like the punchline and this one uh the whole, the whole there's a lot of nastiness to lead up to a maybe mm -hmm. an unsatisfying punchline like yeah if joan had been part of the climax or the resolution we got to see like a good for her moment that would have like kind of balanced things out, but she just right. kind of disappears. So we never get to see like, did she make it out? Did she, you know, land on her feet? What 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 happened to her? 
So it's more uh, it's more focused on the man. And, and what you kind of want to and what you kind of want to see from her too is you almost don't want to even see her go with Johnny. You want to see her just get out of there and do her own thing, mm-hmm. because like you know I know Johnny is played as the hero trying to protect her from uh, from Zambini, but is he really trying to protect her from Zambini because he cares about her or because he wants her for himself? Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. always kind of the the, the weird um, the weird dynamic there. It's another trope. It's the white savior trope. And I hated seeing oh, that too. Oh, damn. Yeah, didn't even think of that. that. Yeah. John Chen is basically the, the delicate lotus blossom, cherry blossom type character. And he's, yeah, the white savior rescuing her from the savage other. The whole episode is kind of ugly in that regard. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're damn, really that's, that's, that. that's another really, really, really good point. So this is why we always have people that are smarter than us to come on. Because now we're like, oh, crap. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go up there. I just have to think about this for a while now. That's a really good point. Um, so yeah, not not the not the worst episode we've ever seen, but definitely uh, lower on the totem. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Mondo, why don't you talk about the comic? Okay, so I actually like this comic a lot better than like the episode. Um, much like you brought up, uh, Danica, with, with the the white savior and the and the the racist themes, they don't really do that in the comic. This comes from uh, the Crypt of Terror. And I don't actually have the the I'm not as, as smart as Jody. I don't have the uh, the actual issue um, numbers uh, and names, but it's actually it's it, just comic source tales from the crypt number forty. I don't know if that's oh uh, crypt of terror. Yeah, um, whatever we can figure that out. Yeah. Um, anyhow, the, the main difference is is um, a it's, it's it's two white characters. Um, the um uh, the I the. I guess the protagonist, the antagonist, and, and, and Joan Chen is a, is, a, is, a, is a white blonde woman. Um, but in this one, uh, Zambini, or I forgot what they call him in this one, but he projects. He doesn't necessarily, he doesn't read minds. He projects his thoughts to other people, and she's the person that can read his thoughts. So they find, um, and it starts out with them finding, basically, it's a gentleman named Carl, who is the animal trainer, and he's telling Marta, he goes, let me take you away. Um, he treats you... Uh, uh, sorry, his name is Eric, and his Carl treats you terribly. And uh, she basically says, like, no, we're a team. Um, yeah, he treats me. He'd never give me he'd never give me a divorce, which is one of the things you got to uh, think about when this came out at the yeah. time. The man had to agree to the divorce, which think. I mean, granted, we're still living in the 50s, it seems like, but it's uh, not, not so much necessary now. But um, and yeah, uh, Carl was very, very uh, paranoid, and he realizes that she's fallen in love with this Eric guy, who's an animal trainer. So he basically creeps up on Eric one night and threatens him with a shotgun and makes him get in the cage with the lion. So there is no ape in this; it's a lion, and the lion doesn't even play a, a giant role. So the lion ends up uh, eating Eric, and they see it the next morning. And Carl's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I I killed him definitely because you're mine, and you and you get me yourself." And why he's saying this? A pole from the big top falls down and smacks him and, and kills him. <laughs> Except for you think it killed him. He's now telling her, I'm not dead. I'm paralyzed. I'll be okay. And she's like, somebody get the undertaker. <laughs> uh, not the undertaker. Obviously he wasn't born yet, but somebody get the undertaker. Get the undertaker's and, brother. And uh, oh God, let's not get into that. Jason. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh so basically uh he basically get the undertaker and meanwhile you see the thought bubbles come out of carl's so he's saying please don't let him do let him do this and she's like fuck you you suck i'm doing this and he even tells them after they have the uh after they have the funeral like, oh by the way don't embalm him he wouldn't want that so it ends with them burying him alive and he's screaming from the grave saying why would you let this happen to me so there's also a news report that they have found many graves open and desecrated. So the very last scene is this beast of a human smashing into uh, Carl's coffin and eating him alive while he's paralyzed, but can still feel everything. Damn. That's so, much better. Yeah. It's kind of a nasty little episode, but they, but like I mentioned, they get rid of uh, like those racist tropes don't exist in this. Everyone is just, it's a lion. It's not an ape. Um, it's, 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 it's two white guys. And they actually, what I love about it is, is the protagonist being, uh, being Marta, the, the woman, uh, she makes all this, uh, she subjects him to all this and rightfully so the dude killed a guy who she liked, won't let her leave him. Like he's a terrible human being. She was all right. Now I have the upper hand and I'm going to give you a user. 
And then I just love how they just threw in this random ghoul who eats who eats corpses just for just to make sure, like, like at the end of the day, put that little exclamation point on Carl's demise. That's really cool. I like so that. I, I'd recommend it. I recommend reading the comic. And, 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 and Danny, if you want to see it, we can link it to. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, that's a cool. That is a cool frame. All right. Do we have any uh, closing thoughts before we do our uh, ratings? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. No, that's yeah. right. All right, Danica, zero to five, you do half points, zero being the worst, five being the best. What do you rate this episode? Uh, mm, I don't, this is very hard because as we've stated, the craft is impeccable. It's a very beautiful looking episode. Like the, the first dolly shot through the circus is really masterfully done the performances are masterful um but the racism the racism yeah. um i would say a 3.5 i have a love-hate relationship with the episode <laughs> i mean yeah that's fair mondo yeah, um, I have to go three because uh, for said, all the problems, it's still a beautifully shot episode with very, very, very solid acting um, by everybody, everybody involved. And when that happens, like, that definitely ups my enjoyment of something, even when the subject matters more problematic or um, not really what I want it to be. And I was going to go two and a half, but I was like, that's hard to give me give it two and a half when Ernie Hudson is so damn good. Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, and Ernie, Ernie and, uh, and, and, and Joan Chen is, is fantastic in this, too make sure she gets her her due all right yeah i'm going with the 2.5 it's just when i look at it and i'm like do i I really enjoy this episode and like i enjoyed the beginning bits like the setup a bit but then once it started going i'm like i don't i'm not really into this very much and as before you know you kind of uh opened us up to some of the other undercurrents going on um but it's pretty well made some good performances but overall i just didn't really like it um okay well that's our reading now you'd we're gonna like to you'd like it better if we just reviewed dawson's creek this week yeah i would much rather review the dawson's creek episode the scare um that takes place is it, i think on friday the 13th <laughs> i have to know well, why is it called the scare like that my my first thought when i saw the scare was like was it is it a pregnancy scare <laughs> no no they're okay so in in the episode they pick up um some hitchhiker Who's I guess his boyfriend is like terrorizing her, and they take her to her house for a seance that they're having, and she like they then they tell, start telling spooky stories, and she tells us like urban myth about the woman who um, is going berry picking with her baby, and she leaves the baby in the car, but the doors open so she can like you know keep an eye on the baby, and then when she's done, she comes back and she finds a snake in the baby's throat, and she goes to pull it out to save the baby, and all the baby's insides come out. And for someone who hates snakes as much as I do, that is just the most terrifying story ever. Wait, this is Dawson's Creek? Yes. <laughs> Jesus. This is on the CW back this in like CW, the, man. the 90s? It, it was the 90s CW. Things were a little uh, different back then. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I still don't regret not watching the show. But <laughs> One day, Monday, I'll get you. We're, we're going to review that episode for Patreon. That's what we're going to do. Okay um all right I join? <laughs> you can you can take my spot in that episode because i don't think i'm gonna do this <laughs> i don't know if we're, if we're ever gonna get around to it but all right now we're gonna kick it over to our uncle al do do, 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 do anything, anything anything and we're back um a couple of quick announcements that i want to make we have some great interviews on our feed right now um as we mentioned uh last week uh we have an interview with assistant director dave mckifford um, great interview about some great uh, Hollywood stories I'm making of the uh, 70s King Kong and the Back to the Future series and Who Framed Roger Rabbit, on and on and on. Also, a great parenting story uh, sandwiched in there. Really good interview. Does anybody else want to see the 70s King Kong remade, but Jeff Bridges is playing the dude? <laughs> I, I just want him lackadaisically not caring as King Kong's like destroying the city and he's just watching from his front doorstep with, with his Caucasian. There's like, Dude, that's just like your opinion, man. 
<laughs> with, with, with Creed, Creed is playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> when King Kong starts playing the Eagles, he's like, damn it, I can't stand the fucking Eagles. That's when he goes after King Kong. So yeah, that's when he jumps Eagles. in the plane Eagles, and man. shoots King Kong down <laughs> playing Creed's Clearwater Revival. <laughs> Um, all right, and this other interview we have um, is uh, Al Katz has kicked off season two of the How Not to Make a Movie podcast. The first episode is an interview that's never happened before. He has John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and Kevin Yeager, the uh, designer puppeteer of the Crypt Keeper, uh, oh. talking about the, you know how they came together and they created the puppet, and John did the auditioning, and you know how things evolved, and you know the re- working relationship. Uh, so if you're a fan of the Crypt Keeper, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm pretty sure you are. You definitely want to listen to this. And uh, he, he it, what, his podcast was called the Best Movie Podcast uh, by Entertainment Weekly. So it's pretty high honors. Yes. And we got a shout out on Entertainment Weekly, too. We did. Because um, the universe just works out that way. So what I need is for more of you guys to sign up for our Patreon. I'm going to put a $1 million tier on our Patreon. And that's Armando doesn't, Armando doesn't have to work anymore. So uh, <laughs> if anyone signs up for that, I will do, I'll come to your house and do odd jobs uh, once a month. So he'll fix your, <laughs> he'll fix your internets. I'll fix your internet. Yeah, I know IT. I can do yard work. Like I can lift heavy things. Right, yeah, just let me know. You know what you do? If someone has a million dollars to give us, I'm sure they have like a whole bunch of those cars from Mad Max replicas. You could be the guy with the guitar, just, you know, swinging from that one uh, rig. <laughs> Oh, dude, like, no, that's that's where I draw this. That swing of that rig, that is terrifying. <laughs> and, and, you know, they actually, when they did that movie, they had a person really doing that. Yeah. Fucking terrifying. My favorite is when the guy has, like, a hammock when, when they have, like, downtime. <laughs> like, we have a full day of raiding. Like, let me, let me let me get that hammock. Yeah. But they have, like, one hammock for the entire, like, whatever, uh, mm-hmm. troop or whatever. So, the tr- uh, who did, yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. You know? All right, um, let's go over to Mondo for our song of the day. All right, here I'm going to bring things down a little bit. Let me think sad a little bit. So uh, uh, this past weekend, we got word that a, a good friend of mine, uh, Corey Hirschman, passed away in his sleep. Uh, mm. Corey was a, he, he, he had a lot of demons, man, but he beat his demons and uh, p- passed away in his sleep, from what it sounds like. And uh, Corey was a good dude with a big heart and a quick wit and one of the wittiest guys I know, and also trivia genius. Um, we're, we used to every Thursday play trivia at this place called Bad Beat Brewing. And whenever he was there, I think we went like six weeks in a row of, of, of wins, thanks to him. And then one week he wasn't there, and we lost pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but he passed away this past weekend. So uh, I, I don't think anybody that know, knew him besides me uh, listens to this, but uh, just, just much love to him and his family. So my, my song of the week is a repeat song from a band I've done before, uh, a black metal band from the East Coast called Krieg from uh, New Jersey area. At least they were originally. And the reason why I picked this band, this song is because when Corey and I, we first met each other in 2008 and we we're both working for Apple. Um, have you heard of that company? Apple, like the orchard, angry, angry orchard. I can't tell if you're trolling me, Jason. Uh, the computer company. That makes oh, phones. They make phones? I, I can't tell if it means, God damn it. I hate you. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, but so I was downstairs and we used to always close together at the forum shops. We worked like midnight. I'm down there just sleeping up and cleaning up because I was the only idiot that said I'd open availability. So I always closed and I'm listening to this band called Krieg and it's just, I got blasting and he's downstairs. And, oh, he goes, one of my friends from back home makes music like this. And how often I hear this is, is crazy. Usually I hear people say, oh, you're a metalhead. Me too. I like five finger death punch. And I'm like, oh, God, please don't ever talk to me again. Go take your monster energy drink and go somewhere else. Uh, but he uh, was like, no, it's, it, I said, OK, cool. And I really kind of didn't pay him. He goes, yeah, he his name is uh, Nil. He, Neil. He goes by Neil. I'm like, dude, this is his band right here. And uh, it turns out we kind of became like instant friends after that. And nice. even seeing when Krieg did their like one U.S. tour in the past 10 years, they came to Vegas and me and him went and had a good time. We hit it off and ended up becoming really good friends and uh and he ended up leaving Apple a little while ago and moved back to California. And a couple of years ago, I got to see him. And what's funny is uh, this coming weekend where I'll be seeing you, Joel. Yesterday, when this episode comes out, I will have seen you. I was making plans to see him earlier during the day. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, just a great guy. And and uh, the, the, the worst thing about this is I'm, I'm going to make a joke about it because this is what he would have wanted, is that he's a huge, huge uh, Kevin Smith universe fan. Oh, I love Kevin and Smith. And my first thought when he passed away was, fuck, I hope he got to see Clerks 3. 
Mm. She was so excited for Clerks Three. Um, but Corey, you're but but you're a good man, and I'll, I'll miss your brother. But so our my song for the week is by the band Krieg off the album uh, The Isolationist, which is probably my favorite record by his. Um, it's called And the Stars Fell On. Sorry for your loss, Mondo. Hey man, it happens as part of life, but we're even even at 39, we're, we're too young to be burying our friends, man. We yeah. really are. Like it's it's a shot of morality, like right in the right in the arm. And it's uh, it's tough to see. But hey, dude, we all go there someday. But like all I hope is that when I pass away, I'm remembered as fondly as, as my buddy Corey was. So that's all we can hope for. Yeah, I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. You know, like all those movies came out when I was in high school and everything. So they just it just hit me at the right point. So I'm I'm actually really excited to see Clerks Three. The first time you saw Clerks, did you really actually think it was funny, or did you just pretend it was funny because you wanted to seem smarter than your friends? Um, I was at like a youth group re- retreat and someone <laughs> put it on. If you want to talk about a good time when you're like 14 or something like that, 15. We watched Clerks and Kids back to back. Oh. <laughs> I learned a lot <laughs> as a sheltered 14 year old <laughs> in one night. Um, I, yeah. I first saw Clerks, my buddy Russ, and I'm pretty sure we both like just pretended to like it because I think we're like 12 because yeah. we didn't want to admit that neither of us really kind of got it. And then I watched it again a couple years later. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. And it's, it's actually one of those movies that nowadays is a little bit hard to watch because it's a little bit cringy. And but I think you respect though how it was done and, mm-hmm. and what it opened up. But when you watch it now, it's kind of like hmm, there's a there's a, pro- a lot of problematic I mean, stuff in that movie. It's not it's not as cringy as like chasing Amy, but <laughs> that movie's got a lot of issues. Did you ever hear the story about how um someone asked Kevin Smith if he was ever going to write a sci-fi movie? Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Well, I wrote a movie where a straight guy turned a lesbian straight, so I'd say I've written a sci-fi movie." <laughs> right. Because even because years later, he even understood like how weird of a <laughs> of a scenario that is yeah i really want to watch i haven't seen dogma in a long time i need to watch that i used to it's love got, that movie it's got alan rickman i mean yeah it's the cast is just so good it, it's funny because when um when uh when you know the whole roe versus wade thing went down which i shouldn't even say when it went down because we're still dealing with the aftermath of that fucking bullshit when i say aftermath i mean it's the fact that like a bunch of rich white dudes think they should be fucking telling women what they can do with their bodies. But that meme came out with Jay, mm-hmm. with Jay saying like, what a woman does with her body is her own fucking business. So I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. If, 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 if stone or Jay can figure that out, why can't fucking politicians and, and I'm going to rant about this. I'm just going to get off the subject. Cause I've lost yeah. friends. I've lost friends over this and that's okay. Cause friends that don't agree with Roe versus Wade are friends. I don't want in my life. Put it that way. Um, yeah, I remember just bringing it back for a second when uh, Dogma came out. I was a freshman in college, I think, and I went with a friend from my freshman dorm to try to go see it. It was sold out. So the only other movie that was playing at the time uh, was some movie called Fight Club, which looked, <laughs> which looked terrible. But we're like, okay, let's just, just go see it. And when you go into a movie like that with such low expectations, which I, I still think it's a brilliant movie, I mean, it's been like misinterpreted way. Yeah over the top well it's it's funny because like so many people men take that movie as being like let's be about badassery and stuff mm-hmm. no it's a hundred percent about male fragility yeah exactly it's a hundred percent about how fragile the male psyche is and that oh. was fun but it's funny though the way i watched it when i was 17 and saw it versus now is mm-hmm. night and day because i i'll be honest like when i was 17 i watched it i'm like oh it's about being tough and i watch it later i'm like no it's about how yeah, this shit's all fucked up, and this is why they do this stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's funny that's where the term snowflake came from. About yeah. and and it was basically yeah, like like ah, come on. But it was like one of those signs where I was like, I think I was taking like freshman psych uh, psych philosophy. And I was like, oh okay, I get this. You know, you just you know, you're your idealistic eighteen year old. You know, yeah. you just pick up on a lot of crap like that. Um, also, the friend I went with is a pacifist. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. I took a pacifist. That's see cool. a movie called Fight Club. That's funny. Does uh, Danica, does your dog just have like one little gray patch behind that one ear? As it's a light. It's adorable though. I love it. Like yeah. you have a dog, it's one color and have that one little discoloration. Well, it's a little gray patch, but she also Not has a, a white splash down her chest and then tan color paws. And that oh, is she's... why she's called Elvira because she has it's like a little plunging neckline. Yeah, we we we've seen her before. Oh, she's oh. so she's so adorable. <laughs> she's like, stop holding me. <laughs> we need we need more dogs in the uh, Dads from the Crypt. 
All right, let's do some trivia. I thought I would uh, uh, bring us up a little bit, pep things up with some dental trivia. Who doesn't love dental trivia? <laughs> All right, this is going to be multiple choice, so I can uh, have you guys try to guess. How many gallons of toothpaste do Americans buy every year? 5 million, 14 million, 18 million, or 25 million? A tube of toothpaste actually lasts a long time. 14. Danica? 18. Uh, Mondo is right with 14. Woohoo. All right. How many miles of dental floss do you think Americans buy each year? 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, or 4 million? Do you floss? I used to pick. That's a no. It's fine. Um, I don't floss. Uh, I, um, I don't floss I don't, enough. I don't know. Uh, the most amount. The most amount you said. I'm just going to go with the most. You're going with 4 million? I'm going to go with 4 million. Danica? I was also going to go with the most, but I'll pick Let's a different it. answer. No, we know we can. You can no, you we can go with four million in solidarity. We got this. All right. All right, and that is correct. Hey, can I tell you why I picked four million? Why? Because no one has ever actually used an entire roll of dental floss. They lose it way before they actually finish using it. So they <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mitch Hebert once said, um, "He goes, uh, Mitch Hebert, the comedian, was like, he goes, my friend said, do you know how hard it is to stop smoking?' He said, "Yes." as hard as it is to start flossing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many teeth are in the snail's mouth? 20, 1,000, or 25,000? What the? We're going to go with a, <laughs> We're going to go with 1,000. because No. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go with 1,000 because it has to be like a trick question, right? All right, Dan, like how, many, how many do you think are in the snail's mouth? I'm going to go with the same answer. I'm sorry. I think that's, that's a good answer. 25,000 teeth. What, what the fuck? fuck? It must be that's, really small. That's like nightmare fuel. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. like I'm just to picture thing. that. Uh, that many no, teeth in something that. so small. That's how many teeth like Sloan's McKenzie has. Because it's like fucking. Uh, yeah, okay. Like yeah, do, you make, do, you make, do you make teeth the dog has? How many? 42. Mm. Because my dog had to have 17 pulled. And you never know. Oof. She still eats like a... I, I, no, I think my dog is like not even a dog. I think it's like a fake <laughs> shell of a dog. And there's a fucking raccoon inside controlling it. Or a group of raccoons. Because she just there eats anything. Lost teeth. Didn't slow her down at all. Okay. Here's a good one. Um, in ancient Greece, what did people use as mouthwash? Wine. Oh, my God. Oh God. Salt water. Vinegar. Or donkey's milk. What's donkey's milk? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, I'm going to go with salt water. All right. I'll say vinegar just for a different answer. It was donkey's milk. Of Ugh. course, of course it was. <laughs> Dude, like, think of how crazy it was for our ancestors to look at an animal and be like, I'm just going to drink whatever comes out of those nipples. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, yeah how, how do they start i mean ugh. you know what the more i think about it, the more i get the logic behind it now because that's how you fed your babies so you figure ever they're feeding their babies was nourishment and you could drink okay actually it makes sense never mind i taught myself into it i still don't, i don't mm. even drink i don't i don't like milk yeah either. i don't like milk either so i don't want to drink any of it all right last one in medieval germany it is believed that blank would help cure a toothache Chewing on grass, swishing beer in your mouth, rubbing a rock on your tooth, or kissing a donkey. Uh, it's so my, my first time you said <laughs> what my first time you said Germany. I'm like, oh, it has to do with P, right? Shiza. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And some drop claws, you know. You know, what I'm you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Jason. I've seen you on Craigslist. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, beer, obviously beer. All right, Danica. Chewing on grass, swishing beer, rubbing a rock, or kissing a donkey. Again, for a different answer, I'll say rubbing a rock. Rubbing a rock. 
It was kissing was it a donkey. donkey? Yes. <laughs> okay, dude. Again, this is, about donkeys and teeth. This is some guy at the farm fetishist being like, no, just trust me. <laughs> the things like, you find on the internet. And because he couldn't take pictures, he had some guy trying to draw the image on a paper, a piece of paper real fast. So he could... <laughs> I'll be taking that home with me today. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, we need a good laugh there. All uh, right. My, my best friend's uh, wife is a dentist. And uh, I chipped the shit on my tooth and she fixed it. And I always forget about it because she did such a good job. Oh, really? Just, just saying, yeah. You know what's really cool, though, when your friend's wife is a dentist? Mm. Is you just get to throw the bills away. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then to wrap us up for Dad Advice Mondo, you have some questions from oh, Instagram. Oh, I did have some questions. <laughs> but that 24 hours lapsed. Oh, no. And uh, to our good friend, TJ, that means I lost about half your questions, my friend. I, I really do. Apologize. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. Can we find them real quick? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, if you can tell me how to hack Instagram. Maybe <laughs> we can... <laughs> you can hack the Internet. Maybe they're in my notifications. Hold on. OK, this is this makes a great live. Radio. I know this is great. You yeah, podcasting father. Yeah, because the problem is, is I just forgot that I did it yesterday at in the morning and it was meant in 24 hours ended this morning because I don't know how to use social media. I'm sure I could probably find a way to extend that time. Uh, yeah, you're right. Damn it. Oh, I, I knew I was right. You didn't have to confirm that. Oh, wait, wait. No, I found it. Oh, hot damn. Hot damn indeed. Okay. So we did some of these last night for the episode that's coming out after this one. So tell me if we already did this. But you want to know what? The one one question I really did like, and Danica, I'll ask you because we answer for next week. Mm. What is your favorite uh, spooky Halloween song? Or like yeah. in whatever song like you love to listen to around Halloween time. That clip of that woman twerking to the Goosebumps theme just resurfaced <laughs> on my Twitter feed. I've, ne so. I've never seen this. <laughs> Oh, it's it's amazing. And I think that might have been the game changer for me today. That might be the one this season. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I I'm an 80s baby, so I love Oingo Boingo Dead Man's Party. Um, oh, cool. I'm a goth, so anything, anything from the standard 80s goth playlist. Uh, anything, anything? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I only laugh because you guys both laugh. I didn't get the joke. I'm sorry. There's the song. Anything, anything. I don't know that song. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm a metalhead, man. I'm sorry. My apologies for not knowing a song. Oh, wow. Damn. Damn. All right. I know, I know the Dawson's Creek thing. No, I don't. Was... For us. I don't. <laughs> Actually, I said that, and the theme that came in my head was a theme from Friends. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay you know what pisses me off though uh, i Ooh. think it's on netflix where they Tell have dawson's data. creek they took out the theme and put a different one in there right or rights issues and it's just like, my but, brain just can't wrap my head around it. it's like was it a popular band that did the theme it was paula cole i don't want to wait for our lives to be over <laughs> oh i don't want to wait for our lives yeah. to be over. <laughs> okay yeah i do know it yes but they put you some should. other generic song on on the streaming option so i'm like ugh, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth if dad's from the creek ever happens you should record <laughs> a metal cover of the song <laughs> <laughs> oh god i don't have it in me and not that i wouldn't do it i just don't have the the uh, musical talent anymore to actually do that <laughs> even better it'd be, it'd be terrible oh no 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 dude we're not gonna all right here's a question from tj howard what's your favorite tales cameo You know what's one of those things like you put a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to sit down and look at some of the cameos to, to really we, and by cameo, do we mean like just a quick split second? Or yeah. Mean... I, I I thought of one in the um oh my god, I'm like in the, the one with uh oh my god, Bruno Kirby, um the trap, where uh, Michael J. Fox is the, who directs the episode, plays the lawyer. He okay. just sticks his head in. Absolutely. Like it's like a one shot. Just to say, oh, it's Michael Fox. Um, I love that. I, uh, I just really like that cameo. Yeah, I don't really know about cameos, but like, you know, if you want to say guests are, it's like, I was a yeah, or guests, go ahead. I don't know. All I'm going to say is like, you know, that meme that's going around, like, this is every uh, 
this is every like 90s kids crush and it's like the oh the, the one like, yeah, i posted that yeah you posted that right so all i'm gonna say is like you can get rid of the pink ranger because i was never to power rangers but throw terry hatcher in there and i'm, I'm a fan yeah okay terry hatcher definitely uh the <laughs> 90s and could do you have a favorite uh guest um I mean, again, Tia Carrera, not, Tia Carrera not was great. like, yeah, Tia Carrera was amazing. She was Debbie great. Moore was amazing mm-hmm. in her episode. Um, I love Joe Pesci's episode. Yeah. Oh, I love Joe Pesci. Yeah. Um, Tia Carrera did retweet us at one time on I know. Twitter I was and, like... also, and comment about how great it was. But oh. uh, Kathy Ireland follows me on Twitter <laughs> and I refuse to follow her back. Why? I'm playing hard to get. Uh. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure it's some publicist that just found an, an account. I think I might have like retweeted one of our things where she's a star and her publicist is like, oh, Kathy. They mentioned Kathy Ireland. Uh, follow, mm-hmm. but or who knows, man? Maybe she's stalking me. All right. Uh, next one, another one from TJ Howard. Best interview you had with cast or crew or director, etc. Um, Jace is like, I got this question. <laughs> well, because I've done all the interviews, but well, I, I well, hold on a second. I'm going to answer before you answer them. Okay. Um, uh, with Cyrus and Ethan from, uh, from Demon Knight, I thought that the was so much. Of Demon Knight, yeah, that was so much fun. And I wish I could do more interviews with you, but they were just so inviting and open. And it's one of those things, right? You put these people on a pedestal sometimes, and you talk to them. And they're just like two normal dudes that want to shoot the shit and talk about something they're passionate about. And, and that was a lot of fun. And obviously, every time we get to talk to Al, like when we had Al on for Tell Us Look from uh, Tell Us Look at Movie, like I'm kind of, I was kind of fanboying inside the whole time. Yeah. You know, for all these interviews I do, I get so nervous before each and every one. Like, and then well, you just have to like take a breath and just like you see their name pop up and like the in the Zoom like invite thing and like the, that they want to be admitted. I'm just like, Okay, here we go. Just you know, put your game face on and do it. And every one of the interviews, I've had such a blast, and it's such a amazing thing that we've got to do. You hide it well because, like, whenever I'm doing this with you, and I get there before you do, and their name pops up, I'm like, I'm just fucking waiting for Jason. Like he can, <laughs> he, can he can let him in. But, I, my my anxiety can't handle that, dude. Oh yeah, it's so, it's a lot. I, then, I, I, I'll just say, man, like you, if, if if you are anxious when you do these, you don't show it. No, and I'm I mean that as a yeah. Yeah, your interviews are really amazing. Oh, um, thank you. Your questions are always uh, meticulous. It's anything any one of us would want to know. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to think about. Like, what does a fan want to know? And, you know, kind of go from there. No, and, I also, like it. And, and also try to ask questions that, like, not everyone asks them. Try to think of, you know, because I actually, when I first, so when we first started doing interviews, you know, the first person I reached out to was John Kassir. And I was like, oh, this is such a long shot, you know. I'm sure he's got plenty of other things to do. And within like a couple hours, his public, his um, agent, publicist, whoever, it's like, yeah, how about Tuesday? I'm like, what? Am I being pranked? Is this a joke? Like, I it just it was like, is it that easy? And I'm like, wait, I, how do I do an interview? <laughs> you know. So like, I, I talked to a couple people, and they and they actually suggested watching um, the Hot Ones. I was one of those people that. Is that you? Told you to watch, I told you. I told you to watch Hot Ones. Then Eric from Bloody Good Horror told Horror told you to watch Hot Ones too because yeah. he because he conducts like just the most natural interviews. He's so mm-hmm. good at it. Yeah. So I yeah. When, so what I did was I watched some Hot Ones episodes just to get a feel for it and just get an idea of the questions he was asking. Try to pull some stuff from that. And also then I tried to re- re- watch some of his um, other interviews to try to like figure out you know what's what has he told people a million times that everyone knows and try to avoid that i try to make it fun for the interview person so i'm, I'm gonna wrap, i'll wrap mm-hmm. around and we'll make this a jason love sandwich here uh but uh no dude, like when i from the first interview you did because i edited all them to the, the most recent one you did um mm-hmm. and i don't mean this in a bad way but you've gotten i can i can listen to your progression and how yeah. far you've come along as an interviewer and how natural you sound and how you do ask really good questions but i think that f- why they're so good is there questions that like the, the interviewee wants to answer because right. it's not always just run of the mill. It's right. easy to ask like, Oh, I saw you're on this. How was it working with the star that everyone, and he's like, fuck dude, I've been asked this 8,000 times. Um, but uh, no, man, you're, you're, you have a knack for it. You're really doing, oh, I don't, I'm not, you. I'm not just saying that because uh, you could <laughs> fire me. I'm saying this because uh, 
<laughs> uh, because well, I, I, really, I really do mean it. Well, the really my, funny. Oh, oh sorry. Well, I was going to say one of my favorite episodes that you ever did was interviewing Kimmy Robertson. You got her yeah. to open up so much. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah that was really fun. A really was, good one. So I had no clue what to expect from that one. And that would come up really well. And just in transparency and maybe some inside baseball, but a lot of times Jason will edit the parts that he knows he needs to edit out for me. But that's one of the ones where I was going through. I didn't just like fat, like skip around through it. I started listening to it. And then it was like almost 90 minutes, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the longer ones. And I had it. Just, I, I was on, I was on a road, I was a trip for work. I sat and listened to the whole thing. Cause it was so good. And yeah. I, I do listen to most of them, but a lot of times I listen to it after the fact. Um, but that was one of the ones I was like, damn, like you, yeah, that was a great one. Yeah. Well, and then the funny thing about the uh, John Kassir interview, again, like, which is the very first one, I'm like, okay, we have to have everything down. So I had like 50 questions. And John Kassir is such, he's, he's a comedian. He's like, you know, stand up. He was, he's on stand up comedian. He's done improv, all kinds of stuff. So he knows how to just like be entertaining. He just turns it on. And I only got through like 10 questions in, in total because he, he talked, he just, he just talked the entire time and we just let him. And it was amazing. I was, me and Jody were like trying not to like laugh into the microphones because he was being so goddamn funny. He was just awesome. so charismatic. He's just so energetic and everything. He was just like, he was so amazing. He just put us so at ease, but just so funny that I came up with 50 questions and barely made it through. But, you know, I always figure it's better to have too many questions than too little questions. Yeah, I, know. I, I definitely agree. Um, all right. Here's another one from TJ Howard. Would you want, uh, no, we already talked about, okay. He, Damn he TJ. The, yeah, I know. Uh, we talked about this one in our next one about um, how Quan Leap is coming back. We want another Tales of the Crypt, but I'm going to switch this around. If you could quantum leap into one person at one time, who would you want to quantum leap into? So if you could spend a day in someone else's life, anywhere, anytime. I got this. I would leap into Cliff Burton. And then, oh, and, no, 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 no. Don't say it. Be, I know where you're going. We'd be on a European tour in 1987. Oh, no. Mom, no, and, please uh, don't. and Lars would be like, let's switch blunk. Let's switch bunks. I'd say, no. <laughs> so fucking dark. That is so fucking dark. <laughs> Dak is looking at us like she doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about. No, <laughs> I'm just quietly <laughs> amused. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I, you I have one of those. I wish it was large shirts, I, I, Mondo. I, 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 am, I am. I am pretty serious about that. But uh, um, that's actually a really, really good question. That's actually like that's a, yeah, that's a hard one. It's just I, that's the first I popped in my brain. That's what I would do because I'd love that Cliff Burton still. Uh, but uh, and Lars Ulrich. I don't necessarily want Lars Ulrich dead. Like if he just broke both his arms and couldn't play drums anymore, that'd be okay too. <laughs> Not that he can play drums with arms. So. Oh my god. <laughs> all right danica you got one for us i mean i feel i'd probably leap into one of my heroes or somebody somebody who is an icon to me maybe like liz taylor at the height Mm. of her career or liza at the height of her career just to know what it was like you know when when i was young um one of the things i mean like i don't know why i still remember this very vividly i I think i was in, in high school but our english teacher showed us ivanhoe uh, the original with Liv Taylor mm-hmm. and uh, it was Elizabeth Taylor. And mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit. Like, like it's kind of because you're young, right? You see her as this old woman. And then because you're not really cultured. And I saw her and she was young. I'm like, holy shit. She's like one of those beautiful human beings I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like totally just blew my young mind. Like <laughs> uh, I know this thing, but uh, and, and she was such a great. I, uh, what an interesting life she lived. What a crazy, interesting life she lived. I mean, in the best way possible. It was um, always one of my stupid goals to be married as many times as she's been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working That's a on goal. it. So, uh... <laughs> That's definitely a goal. <laughs> it, wait, that's a goal, Jason, for you? No, I was saying that. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. one hell of a goal. <laughs> um, all right. That's a really hard question. I don't know who I'd want to be, but I can tell you where, I, where I'd want to be. I want to be on the set of Alien when they're filming the chestburster scene. Just a random technician or someone. That would be the most interesting thing to watch. 
just the reactions or, and everything and how they're putting it together and then like for all you know how big that got that'd be cool oh man thinking like there's uh, i mean when you really think about it, like think about how you could just leap into the average person's body at a certain event and change how that mm-hmm. event turned out for the better. Like when the 49ers played the Super Bowl in the Ravens <laughs> versus the Ravens, I, did, I, I could have been the ref that actually called fucking holding on that last play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even love football. It's a funny thing. I just like my one team. Um, That's awesome. Or like I could have been the referee when the Golden Knights, when we lost the Sharks in the playoffs on that stupid fucking bullshit five minute major foul and called the right call like god i could do so many great things did, um, Mono, didn't uh didn't all your teams win the uh, WNBA? Uh, well, I, I talked about it i think in next episode. yeah uh, okay. las vegas aces uh WNBA team uh whooped that ass and won the uh our first ever las vegas uh, championship well pro sports excuse me pro sports championship which is pretty awesome but the cool part is like, what i really hope this happens is and i'm not gonna lie like i'm I don't follow WNBA, but I don't follow NBA either. I'm just not, I'm not a big fan of basketball, but um, I did watch the finals and try to support our team during the playoffs because I, I, my my mentality is this, right? So we're, we want women's sports to, to make the same amount of money as men's sports at some point. Right. So to do that, we have to support women's sports and we have to buy tickets to the games and watch them on TV and get the ratings up. So the only way we do that is by supporting. So I I really am going to, I don't support the NBA, but I'm gonna try to support WNBA more and more. And and because fuck, dude, like bring us championships home, man. It's so cool. Um, but mm-hmm. we did do a, they they did a parade for him on the strip, which was pretty awesome. And if, if for your mental health, guys, don't go on like your local news Facebook pages because all it was was all these comments that were like, "Fuck yeah, great job, great job." I'm gonna start watching white male incel. Mm-hmm. They're just women. Who cares? Like, I mean, fuck you. Like, why do you got to be that way? Why can't you just like revel in other people's happiness? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a good thing. Um, man, this you know that whole quantum wave thing is such a great question. It's like my brain's just going now. Like, how many like things you could have stopped, or how many things? But then mm-hmm. you have to get into the consequences. Like, if I stop this catastrophic, like, like <sighs> you kill baby Hitler. Y- you know what though? That's that that's so unrealistic. Is something you could do. But if you want me to be realistic, one thing I would have done if I quantum been anybody would be go back to when the Route 91 shootings happened here in Las Vegas and 50 yeah. people died, and be a security guard and go and bust in that guy's room and do whatever I had to do to stop him. Like, realistic is a lot of things my brain's going off of. Aside from the obvious, which is making sure Lars die instead of Cliff. But <sighs> uh, this could take me a while to process that one. Well, dude, like you, you can, it's cool, man. Like I, I love Metallica, but I also understand that the least talented member of the band is a guy that plays the drums. And if you've been playing the drums for 30 years, almost 40 years in a band, and you still can't keep four, four time, you suck at your job. That's like working at McDonald's for 40 years and still burning every fucking burger. Like it's, you just don't get to keep your job. You have to find something else to do. Like you can go work at Home Depot. All right, moving on. <laughs> um, what horror movies uh, are you looking forward to this Halloween? season uh hellraiser the hellraiser reboot i'm all in for the hellraiser reboot yeah because i think we talked about this on our next episode too but i i I would be excited for halloween kills or halloween ends just to see what they do with it and actually i didn't mind halloween kills as much as a lot of other people hate on it but i mean done it you can start a three-hour Halloween episode from I last know, year. I know. A, but uh, no, I'm a, I, I love Halloween kills. I did. I'm, I'm okay to say that. Um, but they haven't done anything to make us excited because they know we're all going to go anyways. So they don't Dude. really have to spend the money or time to, like, you know, get us in. But the, the Hellraiser looks really good. I know we, were, I know we talked about that already. You could just show me, about that. You could just show me a movie poster that said Halloween, not by Rob Zombie, and I'm in. I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Danica, what are you looking forward to? sad to say but i haven't been able to keep up with like the recent release slate kind of had a lot of personal drama which again is part of why i had to reschedule this episode and part of why i thought i wasn't going to be able to speak about it but i'm i'm with all of you on hellraiser um and i haven't seen barbarian yet and i'd like to i need to see barbarian i need to see bodies 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 i'm I'm behind I don't get a chance to really see movies when I'm in town because my time's kind of limited. But when I travel for work, I have nothing. Not, I have two options. I'm going to go to the bar and I'm going to drink, which is not good for me, or I'm going to go watch movies. So I go watch movies. And I saw Barbar- Barbarian. And all I'll tell you is just go in with zero idea of what the movie is. because That's what I did. Mm-hmm. And it'll be cool. You'll have, a good, you'll have a good time. That's what everybody says. So I had to look it up. 
<laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. But I went as blind oh. as possible and it was uh it was great. He you got your little she's a little watchdog there. She's uh mad at something. <laughs> All right, I think we got one more that we're gonna do. Uh, but, okay, let me ask you guys this. Are either of you guys gonna watch Rob Zombie's Monsters? Probably. Yeah, I will too. I love the I love the original monsters. This Sam. movie looks like garbage, but I'm probably gonna I'm, I'm definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna watch it. Other than it's got like anything that has any type of Frankenstein in it, I'm into. But I, I've no I don't think I've ever seen like the original show. I've no connection to it. A uh, Frankenstein's monster in it. Thank you, Jason. Um, I feel like I should give it a chance, but there's so many other things I want to see above that that I'm like. Mm. I loved the original show, like Lily Munster, goth icon. Mm-hmm. Ever, so like, I yeah, just actually, want to know what he does with it. In, in the pillars of like 90s kids crushes, you can get rid of one of them too and throw in Lily Munster. Cause yeah, I was a big, like that, when I was a kid, man. Like that was, I love the Munster. Fucking love that show growing up. And it's really What's cool it? too. Uh, the whole set was actually done in pink because mm-hmm. pink showed up better as black and, and black and white as you say i was a big Adams family kid and they, also, uh, they did the same too. thing with uh the pink and all the bright colors so oh. it looked like it looked really groovy when they showed the onset color uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that reboot too yeah the show really looks really good yeah, yeah. You know. okay so we got another question and see what would wait jason from... did jason did you answer besides hellraiser anything else um no, I think Hellraiser might be the, the one oh, I'm most. I have I have two more now. One, the trailer got released today, and it's based on Paul Tremblay's um The Cabin at the End of the World. Oh, is it coming it's, out this year? Um, I don't know, but if it is, I think I thought it says coming out this year. Um, but the trailer actually was way better than I thought it was. I love that book. And um uh God, I fucking lost the other one. My brain my brain doesn't work anymore. I'm getting too Here's old. a question for you. When you're watching a movie trailer and then you see um a film by m night Shyamalan. does that make you <laughs> happy or scared <laughs> oh, oh real fast i remember the other one the other one is my best friend's exorcism yeah i love good. that book so much um uh, i will say this i remember i went to go see uh, machete at a midnight screening and they showed the trailer for the movie uh devil in the elevator mm-hmm and we're, and we're all watching it, right? And was, this is pretty cool. When it's in a film by M. Night Shyamalan, the yeah. whole theater booed. Oh, God. I was like, uh, but The Visit. The Visit brought me back. The Visit was fantastic. Yeah, I like The Visit. Um, I did not hate Old. I thought Old had a lot of good ideas. Yeah, good ideas. Uh, yeah. It, the ending wasn't great, but overall, yeah, I kind of like Old. Um... I was so disappointed by Old. I, really? Yeah. No. The, the whole movie, or was it just the ending? All of it. And yeah, okay. G- Gail, his performance let me down. I just oh, he didn't damn. feel invested in the role at all. I just, I don't know. No, yeah, makes sense. Felt invested. That makes sense. Felt I, invested. I can't talk right now. <laughs> no, you're neat. Neither can I. You're fine. I, I, I find the older I get, the more I kind of let's. That's so much more slide in movies. Where I was like, eh, I just. Loved, I'm also a pro wrestling fan, so my brain tends to fill in all the plot holes. Because I'm used to it. So my brain just says, like, yeah, <laughs> I know why that happened. I'll make it up later. Um, one movie I'm not looking forward to is this new Jeepers Creepers movie coming out. Well, okay. <sighs> like, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, can we stop giving this dude a platform? I don't okay, think, seriously. I don't yeah. think he's associated with it, but he is, like, just by association. Right. You know, he's so not, I, like, I, technically part of it, but yeah, it's a different director. <sighs> I get both sides of it, but like I almost think you have to be very vocal that he's mm-hmm. not attached to it anymore. Saying like he's not making a dollar off this. I bet you he's still making money because he. I think he wrote the first one, so right. he, it's his, it's his intellectual property. Yeah, and, and, well, anything that draws attention to it means like, people going to go yeah. back and rewatch the originals. I'm like, and, no, and, just just bury and, it. Well, I'm not going to lie. I loved the original. I enjoyed the sequel, but it's it's one of those films. Like I'm the same with Polanski films, right? Like. I respect that Rosemary's Baby is a wonderful movie, but I'm not good at, at separating. I, all I can think of is how much of a piece of shit Polanski is, though. So it's it, it's a I get it. Like I'm not gonna knock anybody who wants to watch it, knowing that he's not associated with it and they're cool with that. But it's just not gonna be for me. Yeah. All right, and then to round things out, 
Um, what would dust from dust till dawn have been like if it was a Tales from the Crypt movie? Exactly the same. A much better version of Bordello Blood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly kind of the, the same. same. I, I think it kind of was the Lost Tales from the Crypt movie. You really think about it. I mean, it's got every element from a great mm-hmm. Tales from the Crypt episode. Right. And uh, you know, give it give it a crypt give it a crypt keeper wrap around, and uh, I think I think you're good to go. Yeah. That was definitely another one of my um, early high school favorites. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I will say the whole Salma Hayek uh, uh, scene with the feet. It's a lot creepier <laughs> when you realize that Quentin Tarantino. Like, and again, don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with having a foot fetish. That's totally cool. That's your thing. But it's really weird when you're hiring actresses and having them do that and they don't know right. <laughs> that's your fetish. That's fucking weird. Yeah. Because you're, say- you're doing it for your sexual satisfaction. Satisfi- sat satisfaction satisfaction what the fuck what the fuck is that satisfaction You're like quentin it's cool <laughs> <laughs> he's he's possessing you <laughs> hey but like if i was quentin tarantino like i'd have totally just told her what was up like all right this is my thing are you cool with this and then you have consent <laughs> but um he did not do that and that's what's kind of weird about that like he just scripted it and didn't tell her that was his weird as his uh, his fetish that he was getting off on so that, like, he, made, that he cast himself into do yeah yes that's really messed yes, up yes that's pretty fucking weird uh, and again the fetish isn't weird it's weird how he handled it mm-hmm. but it is I, I haven't seen it in probably 15 or so years I used to love that movie a lot oh yeah me too and Tom it's, Savini is Tom Savini is, and uh and, Harvey you know, Keitel and Julia yeah. Lewis, Cheech and Chong, yeah. yeah. just was it just, just Cheech, Cheech. just yeah. Cheech Marin, just as as the uh, the the host of the titty the titty twister. Um, yeah, and I I love from Dust Till Dawn, but it's just that one scene with Salma Hayek and Quentin Tarantino just creeps me out nowadays. <laughs> all right, and that's all we got. Um, I think that wraps up another episode. Danica, thank you for joining us. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Donica Eskert or on Twitter at Film and Fishnets. Awesome. All right. Well, next week we will be reviewing people who live in brass hearses. We appreciate everyone for listening. We really... I just realized it's a playoff. People who live in glass houses. Oh my fucking god, yes. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already recorded that episode. <laughs> He's just now figured it out. I feel like I'm fucking moron. Uh, uh, all right. We appreciate everyone for listening. We'd really appreciate if you'll give us a rating or review on iTunes or rating on Spotify. Check out our Patreon and also check out YouTube where we post videos of this podcast. And with that, we thank you for listening to Dads from the Crypt. Toodaloo. (laughs) Follow Dads from the Crypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Or I will follow you to the grave. (laughs) No, seriously, you really should watch. But be careful what you ask for. You may get it.